Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on my tutorials on thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. This is video number 19, and I'm going to discuss the factorial function. So, because this is mathematical, it is not necessarily part of my thermodynamics and statistical mechanics course. So, you, can have, you could be watching this if you're doing anything. So, this is part 1 of 2, because in part 2, I'm going to do out the integrals explicitly. But in this particular tutorial, I'm just going to assume that uh, you're, you're going to accept the, the integrals, as you'll see in a moment. And if you don't want to accept the integrals and you want to see me do them, look at video number 2. So, I've defined the gamma function. So, we say that the gamma function of n plus 1 is equal to n factorial. And this n plus 1 is important, and I'll speak about that later. And we define it e equal to this particular integral. So, the bottom line up front is that the factorial generalize sorry the, the gamma function generalizes the factorial to non integers okay so how do we start well we start by making a few observations and i'm going to show you those now so like i said if you don't accept these observations straight out then look at video part 2 but if you do well then we're we're good to go so let's look at the following derivatives well integrals and derivatives Well, if you do this, you're going to get minus 1, or, we, or sorry, you're going to get 1 over a. Now, if inside the integral, next time we take the, the first derivative with respect to a, we take d dA of both sides, but d dA of an integral is just the integral of, we'll say, d dA. You can move it inside. That's just a pretty basic principle of mathematics. So what we're doing is on the left-hand side, we're bringing inside the derivative, and we're also... Well, of course, we're going to be differentiating on the outside. But let's ignore that we're differentiating on the outside for a moment and just do it via the integral. And what we're going to get is the first derivative with respect to a of e to the minus ax dx. And if you do this, you'll find that the answer is uh, minus 1 over a squared. And if we take the next derivative, sorry, no, you might be able to see that. If you take the next derivative, d2, dA e to the minus ax dx, you're going to get plus 2 times 1 over a cubed. You'll see, of course, that I'm writing the, the, the 1, even though it's not necessary, but we'll see why in a moment. You probably guessed in actual fact because I'm talking about uh, factorials. So the only way to find a factorial is by writing down all the figures together separately. So if we take the next derivative, we're going to get minus 3 times 2 times 1 over a to the 4. And I'll do one last one. Take the fourth derivative with respect to a. And to take the fact that I'm taking it with respect to a is important. You might have made a mistake in the past where I tried to take it with respect to x, and that, of course, doesn't work. Okay, like I said, there, there are some observations. Accept them if you, if you like, and if you don't, look at my next video. So... Let's look at some other integrals. So I'm going to... Let's look at this one here. What if instead I did the following integral? I integrated minus x times e to the minus ax dx. Well, I'm telling you, if you do that integral, you're going to get minus 1 over a squared. If you do the following integral, this time it's plus, so go minus to plus. Well, take a guess what we're going to get here. We're going to get plus 2 times 1 over a cubed. Now, this time I'm going to integrate uh, minus x cubed. And you know, you know what you're going to get here. And finally, we're going to do it just, just to be complete. This time it's plus... going to come plus uh, 4, 3, 2, 1, over 8 to the 5. So the point to note here is that the answer, the, the, the parity of the answer follows the parity of the integral. So where it's plus, this stays plus, negative, this stays negative. But notice that there's an oscillating plus or minus 1, and generally how we talk about this, how we calculate or account for this oscillation is by doing a minus 1 to the n. So just note that for the moment. So just looking at the left-hand side, okay, I'd like to generalize the left-hand side into the, in the following way. We can say that the integral, if 
from 0 to infinity of the nth derivative. The nth derivative. D, well, that, that should be a total derivative, even though I've written it as a partial. If you look at it, like there, there is, there's, there is quite a simple pattern, and the, the simple pattern is that it's minus one to the n, n factorial divided by a to the n plus one. That's the pattern. Okay. Now the next thing is, if we also look, so we know that we'd we'll say all of these give us this particular, this particular uh, expression, but this expression also accounts for all of these answers on the right hand side. Alright? So that means that this integral must equal this integral. Alright? And e equals, equals th this here. Now, what we need to uh, observe is that in my integrals in the green, although I've written in the fact that we have a, an oscillating minus and plus, I haven't accounted for it in some sort of minus 1 to the n term. So it's there, but I just haven't written it in. So in order for it, in order for us to, we'll say, generalize this, in order for this, we'll say, this to actually equal this, we need to get rid of the minus 1 to the n term. Because the minus 1 to the n term, I I've, I've personally wrote in the answer each time, instead of having minus 1 to the n. Alright? So that means that if we get rid of the minus 1 to the n term, we have the following. We have that the integral, the integral of x to the n, e to the minus ax dx is equal to n factorial over a to the n plus 1. Alright, and that's because I get rid of this oscillating term because I already wrote it in to the integrals themselves. And that's, that's our gamma function as you'll see. We're, see. we're getting a factorial function. So let's show, let's, you know, come to the conclusion. So the conclusion is as follows, that the, the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n e to the minus ax integrated dx is equal to n factorial over a to the n plus 1. Now of course we can set a to be any value whatsoever. So let's see what happens if we set a to be equal to 1. Sorry, now it doesn't fix this. So let a equal to 1. Well, if we set a is equal to 1, we get the integral still. And we get this, it's n factorial directly. So we're after generalizing the factorial as some, for, some sort of integral. You, wonder, you might wonder, well, why is this important? Well, think about what n factorial means. Let's say 5 factorial. It means 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. In other words, all of these are integers. What if I asked you to get this? Well, you can't, like, you can't in the, you know, the conventional factorial, you can't do it. However, of course, you can plug it into an integral and get the answer. So that's why it's important. So what we say is, we, we call this particular integral the gamma function. Why we call it something so um, obscure sounding, I don't know, but we just call it the gamma function. So we define it as gamma n plus 1. We don't define it as gamma n. Why? I actually don't know. So I've tried my best to find an answer to why we define it as n plus 1, and the answer is I, I just don't know. So you have to accept that the gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n. Now it's still equal to, it still equals this integral. So it's just a bit odd. Okay? It's just a bit odd. Now, why is the gamma function useful? Well, I said because it generalizes the factorial to non-integers. So that means, of course, that the gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n times the gamma of n. Because this is n factorial, of course. Well, that's actually, yeah. <laughs> this, n, this n plus 1 is, is quite confusing. What if, then, we look at what happens if n is equal to 0? So we try and get the, uh, we try and get the, um, the factorial of 0. So if, if, if you want to get 0 factorial, so we look at the gamma of 0 plus 1, which is equal to the gamma of 0, oh, sorry, excuse me, of the gamma of 1, and that's equal to 1. So that means 0 factorial is equal to 1. And if I was to give an educated guess, I'd say that's why we define the gamma function as n plus 1 rather than as n. 
to account for this to account for zero factorial. So zero factorial is equal to one. And finally, um, the last thing I'd like to show is that if I want to get d over two minus one factorial, uh, well, this is simply going to be the gamma of d over two plus one, which is equal to d over two factorial. All right. So this is just going to be equal to um, so the gamma of d over two is going to be equal to the ga is equal is equal to d over two minus one factorial. Now, why is that important? In uh, another video, when I do the multiplicity of an ideal gas, I need to use this expression for the uh, for the dimensionality of um, or in order to get an expression for the. Um, for an n-dimensional hypersphere, but look, that's that's not really important. And I'm showing you an example where we use it here. Anyway, not to confuse the issue, I'll get rid of it. So the point here is that the gamma function generalizes the factorial to non-integers, and it's this particular expression here. So, if you want to see the integrals on explicitly, look at my next video. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and if you're in a good mood, you might also click on an ad. Thank you.